How does Smartsheet compare with Microsoft Project? I'm Tony Zink, and this is the Project Guide. Hi folks, Tony Zink here, project management author, trainer, and tool jockey, and creator of the Project Manifesto. I show people how to use tools and techniques to get better results faster on their projects, whether that means saving time, or saving money, or reducing risks, or maybe just providing a more stress-free and pleasant experience for everyone involved in the project. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing or following me on your favorite social media channel. And if you're not watching this directly on my website, TonyZenk.com, then you can go there to find this video and others like it. You can find the links to go see where I hang out on social media so that you can follow me and get announcements when I post other webinars like this or videos or what have you. And you can find other goodies there too on my website. So a lot of people use Microsoft Project for managing and planning their projects. It's uh, probably the most popular, if not one of the most popular project scheduling tools out there in the world. Dedicated project scheduling tools, I should say. Uh, and I say it that way because I don't c consider tools like Microsoft Excel, for example, or other spreadsheet tools or um, other, you know, other, other tools that aren't dedicated scheduling tools to be really, truly project management tools. Sure, people use Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet tools like Google Sheets and so forth for you know, many things, including you know, managing projects, but I don't consider it to be a true dedicated project scheduling tool. One of those reasons that I, that, I, um, that I say that is because it doesn't have a project scheduling engine built in, which is one of the, uh, one of the main criteria that I look for when I'm you know, considering whether you know, how good a, a project scheduling tool is or if I'm evaluating a project scheduling tool. So today I'm going to show you an alternative to Microsoft Project called Smartsheet. And uh, I'm going to show you uh, um, some, of the, some, some of the main uh, differences between those two tools and once I switch over to my live uh, screen sharing session here. But as I go through, I'm going to be looking at a, a handful of different criteria when I'm, when I'm evaluating share, um, a Smartsheet against Microsoft Project, which is what I consider to be the, currently anyway, the, the gold standard in project scheduling. Um, the first thing, like I've already mentioned, is does this tool have an automated scheduling engine built in? And what that means is, can you put in a list of tasks with um, duration estimates and uh, sequencing through a, a feature that we call dependencies in the project scheduling world? And then the tool, is, is that tool then able to uh, calculate what the timeline should look like for the project based on the, the, the tasks and the sequencing and duration estimates? Another thing that I look for in a, in, a, in, a, in a proper project scheduling tool is resource management features. And uh, so what I mean by that is, can I take those tasks that I've identified and assign people or other types of resources to those tasks and then have the tool uh, tell me things like who is assigned to what and when and even show me what their workloads look like so that I can look for things that could cause problems like, like uh, resource over allocations or scheduling conflicts or what have you um, out into the future. Cost tracking is another really important feature of a, of a good project scheduling tool. And uh, what I mean by that is, can I uh, assign costs to the tasks in a project and uh, have the tool tell me the overall costs of that project? And even to take that a step further, can I assign hourly rates to the people or other types of hourly resources on my project and then have the, have the scheduling tool calculate the costs for the individual tasks as well as the overall costs of the project for me. Baselining and progress tracking, also very important in a, in a, in a good project scheduling tool because um, once the project is underway, very rarely does it ever actually go according to how you originally planned it to go. And so it's really important to be able to update your forecast for the remainder of the project by entering in what's actually been happening on the project and then allow the scheduling engine to recalculate the remaining forecast for you and tell you now, you know, now that we've 
we've tracked some, we've done some work and we've tracked some progress. What does the remaining timeline look like? And what does the remaining uh, workloads look like and the remaining costs look like for this project? And then uh, the, the, the fifth thing that I, that I typically look for in a project scheduling tool is the ability to generate reports inside that tool or the ability to easily extract information out of the tool and generate reports with my tool of choice, whether that be Excel or PowerPoint or some other more like, you know, more sophisticated, dedicated reporting tools. So those are the main criteria that I'm going to be looking at as I, as I com compare and contrast Microsoft Project with Smartsheet as I go through here today. Now, if you have any questions and your, or comments and you're, um, you're, you're watching me live here, then you can go ahead and type those into the live chat window. If you're not watching this live and you're watching it as a recording on my website at some, at some point in the future, then I would still encourage you to enter your comments, enter your questions, and I'll check back every so often and respond as necessary. So uh, let me switch over to my computer screen and I'll get started. So what we see here on my computer screen is a web browser where I have Smartsheet open and available for me to use. Um, Microsoft Project, I also have that running and I have a project schedule here that I've created using this tool as well. So I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between these two tools and comparing the interface and comparing the functionality and, and, and so forth. In, uh, in each one of these tools. So let me just start with Microsoft Project here and point out, if you're not familiar with Microsoft Project, it has the, um, it has the familiar tabbed navigation interface across the top. If you're, if you're familiar with working with Microsoft Office programs like Microsoft Word and Excel, PowerPoint and so forth, then you've got the same sort of a tabbed interface across the top here that has um, effectively, you know, different groupings of, of commands and features and functions that, that, that it's offering up to you. Tools for working with the tasks in your project, tools for working with the resources in your project, tools for creating reports, tools for, um, you know, looking at or viewing the information in your project in many different ways, and so forth. If I go back over here to Smartsheet, this is running inside my web browser because Smartsheet is a web-based uh, project scheduling, well, it's a web-based application, and um, uh, I, I stopped myself because it's not just a project management or project scheduling tool. People use Smartsheet for many, many, many different types of things, and you can use it for creating and managing project schedules. So um, just as an example here, um, I have a project schedule that I've created in the Smartsheet, and as you can see here, the interface, as far as the kind of information that we're looking at, appears to be fairly similar to what we see over in Microsoft Project. I've got, I've got a collection of tasks here. They're organized into different groupings or they're organized underneath different uh, uh, summary rows. I have columns of information like percent complete and start and finish and, and so forth. And I have a timeline over here on the right-hand side of, the, of, of, my, of, my, of my browser window that shows me a visual represent, representation of where these tasks and milestones and summary groupings, where they fall on a timeline. So in that regard, um, it looks fairly similar to Microsoft Project. If I switch back over here to Microsoft Project, again, you know, tasks and other columns like duration, start date, finish date, you know, resource names and so forth with, again, our, a Gantt chart or, or timeline representation of where those items fall on a timeline. From that perspective, it's very similar. Other than that, though, the navigation um, is, is somewhat different between these two tools. I pointed out the, the tabbed navigation interface in Microsoft Project, o only over here in Smartsheet, um, all of your tools, for the most part, are available over here in this toolbar that runs vertically down the left-hand side of my screen. And then there's also some, some right-click functionality where you can right-click on things like right-click on tasks and have access to a shortcut menu that allows you to do things like, you know, standard copy, cut, copy, and paste types of fe features, insert row, delete row, you know, uh, in, 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 you know row actions, and other, other types of things here. Again, and from that regard, very similar to Microsoft Project. However, 
Uh, one main difference in, between the two tools is the ways that we can view the information in our project schedule. So in Microsoft Project, if I go to the view, if I click the View tab, I see that there's many different views of this information that I can look at. I can look at the standard Gantt chart view that shows me the collection of tasks with you know their visual representation on the timeline. There's a network diagram view that shows me graphically, you know, where, uh, more of a, like a kind of a a process flow diagram of the activities for my project. I have a calendar view that shows me uh, where these tasks fall on a, on a calendar. And then I have other types of views that show me the, the resources or, or, or the, you know, the people who are working on my project team. I have resource usage views that show me a breakdown of each person on the project or each resource on the project and which tasks they're assigned to. And then in the right-hand panel here, I have a breakdown of uh, things like uh, you know, numeric information, like work hours over, over time. Okay, some of these things I, or some of these um, representations of the data, I do not have the ability to see over here in Smartsheet. Over here in Smartsheet, I have a Gantt chart view, like I've been pointing at here for the last few minutes. I have a traditional sheet style view, with, which is basically the same as the, as the Gantt chart view, but it just doesn't have the Gantt chart timeline over on the right-hand side. I have a calendar view, very similar to Microsoft Project that shows me where those activities fall on a calendar rather than on a tradition than on a, on a straight timeline. Although here's something that Microsoft Project does not have, which is the card view. Now let me put a caveat on this. I'm running Microsoft Project Professional 2016 on my computer right now. This is the most recent version of Microsoft Project Professional. Although there's another version that's available where you can, through Microsoft, purchase Microsoft Project as a subscription through their Office 365 offerings. This is not that version. This is the purchase once and install it on your, on your PC version. If I were subscribing to the, um, to the, to the, to the, to the if I purchase the subscription version of Microsoft Project, and if I were using this with Project Online, then there is a new card style view that is available in Microsoft Project. I don't have it available in this version that I'm running. But back to Smartsheet and the card view. This is a, this is a view that a lot of people are, are, um, are using these days to manage more agile style projects or more lightweight style projects. And what it allows you to do is um, group your activities based on uh, different status criteria. And so in this case here, I'm looking at all of my, all the tasks in the project. And if I scroll down here, I can see that all the tasks are listed in the first column of this card view in the not started column. And then I also have in progress, on hold, and completed columns. Now, if I switch back over to my Gantt chart view, and I move over here, I drag my vertical splitter bar over here to the right, I, I'll expose a status column that I created. Now, this is a column that I created in Smartsheet, and I can use this to just assign a basic status to each task in this project. In this case here, the values that I can that I can pick from are not started, in progress, on hold, or completed. So those are the statuses that it's using when you go to when you go to the card view that it's using to organize or group the, the activities. If I were to go back to the Gantt chart view and change one of these activities to um, in progress, and then if I go back to the card view, I can see that that activity has automatically been moved to the in progress column. I can also set this uh, status from right here in the card view by dragging and dropping. If I want to move this, act, this, this activity, review charging equipment features and suppliers, if I want to move this to the on hold status, I just simply drag it over into that column. And then I want to go back over to the Gantt chart view. Sure enough, it's now on hold. So some people really like the ability to use that drag and drop type of interface for, for basic types of, uh, uh, you know, features like, like status or assigned to. That's another application of this card view where you can switch from grouping by status to grouping or organizing by assigned to. And now I see 
the, all the activities that are assigned to the installation engineer and the project manager and the electrical contractor and so forth. And if I want to reassign a task from one resource to another, I just simply drag it and it'll reassign that task to the new person. So pretty slick, pretty slick. So moving on here, um, let me just point out here uh, something, another difference between Microsoft Project and Smartsheet. So in Microsoft Project, when you, when you create a new project schedule, you're, you're automatically given all the fields or many of the, the fields or columns that you need to start creating a project. You have a task name column, you have a duration column, start column, finish column, predecessors, um, resource names, and, and there's many more. If you right click on any one of these column headers and, and select insert column, there's hundreds of other columns that you may need for building or managing your project schedule all built in. You just have to right click and select which columns you want to include, like duration, for example, and it's already there and waiting for you and ready to go. However, over in Smartsheet, when you go to create a new project, let me just save this before I move on. When you go to create a new project, I'll just click, click on, the, on the new tab here. If you just start with a blank sheet, because Smartsheet is really a, a really sophisticated spreadsheet tool. And if you just start with a blank sheet and call this Project A, it's literally a, a blank spreadsheet where you need to rename, rename the columns. Like I want this primary column to be task name. And then I also think that I need a start column. So I'll rename this to start and make it a date column. And then I'll do a finish column and a duration column and so forth. You're just essentially given a blank slate to start with here and you have to build all these columns that you think you need to manage your project. Now, um, there is a template, there are templates available to you in Smartsheet. If I click the new button tab here again, there is a project sheet template that you can start with. I'll call this project B. And it will give you many of these columns that you think you might need to, to get going on your project task name, duration, start, finish, predecessors, assigned to, percent complete. It may not have everything that you want, like a percent allocation, for example, but it, it, does, it does give you a, a good start. Let me also point out something else here. Um, Smartsheet does have the ability for you to uh, create a new project by importing a Microsoft project file. So if you have somebody that you work with who's given you a Microsoft project file and you want to manage that in Smartsheet, uh, maybe it was a template that you, that you got your hands on, or maybe it's a, a, a contractor or a vendor that you work with and they use Microsoft project, but you use Smartsheet. Um, there is the ability to import a Microsoft project file into Smartsheet. However, I would, um, I would warn you to be careful with this. I tested this functionality with a project schedule that I created with Microsoft Project. And the result that I came up with here is not accurate. Um, and I, I didn't go through in detail and figure out you know, exactly what happened or why, but I do know that these phases are not correct and some of these tasks are not organized correctly and so forth. So you may get unpredictable results if you import a Microsoft Project schedule into Smartsheet. So, just a, just a word of warning there. Okay, so moving on here, let me, um, let me just, uh, let's, let's just take a quick look at the, the, the experience in terms of adding tasks, removing tasks, and assigning resources and so forth. So in Microsoft Project, let's just pretend that uh, somebody on my team told me that I no longer need to do the review charging equipment features and suppliers task. We don't need to do that. So I'll just right click and delete that task from my project schedule, okay? And now at some point later, maybe somebody on my project team says, oh no, no, we need to do that task after all. So that's fine. I'll right click and insert task. It creates an empty row here for me where I can enter in the information for that task. Uh, review, charging equipment, features and 
suppliers. I can put in a duration here, five days, and it's very easy for me to uh, put this task in sequence or in series with the following task, select charging equipment supplier and hardware model. I can just go up here to the task ribbon and use the link selected tasks button to link those two tasks together. And then if I want to assign the installation engineer to this task, I have a number of ways to do that. I can go over here to the resource names column and select their name, or I can use one of my favorite methods of assigning resources to tasks in Microsoft Project, the assign resources dialog box, which you can find up here under the resource tab. Click assign resources, that opens the assign resources dialog box. I select the task I want to assign somebody to, I select the resource that I want to assign to that task in the dialog box and I click assign and then assigns them to that task. And there's a number of other ways to assign resources to tasks in Microsoft Project. This is just one of the, the quickest, easiest ways that I prefer to do or prefer to use. Over here in Smartsheet, let's, do, let's go through the same exercise. So somebody on my team tells me, we don't need to do this first task here, review charging equipment features and suppliers. Okay, right click and delete. Okay, so that task is gone. And then at some point later, somebody tells me, oh, you know what? We need to do that task after all. So I can right click on that task row and I have the option to insert above, insert below, cut, copy, paste, and so forth. I'm gonna insert a row above that and I'm gonna type my task name back in there. Review, charging, equipment, features, and suppliers. Okay, it does not populate a start date or a finish date for me. So I'm gonna to need to select that. And this is starting out in July. And if I put in a finish date, or I'm sorry, if I put a duration in here, it'll calculate a new finish date for me, 7.13. That's, that's, that's expected. Now, to um, link these tasks back together, you can see here on the, on the following tasks, select charging equipment supplier and hardware model. Um, it, it was originally linked to that first task that I deleted, so it lost the reference, so it's giving us a little kind of an error message here. If I want to link those two back together, if I select those two tasks, this is at least how I would do it in Microsoft Project, or one technique that I would use in Microsoft Project anyway, I might then be, go and start looking for a link tasks button. Well, there isn't one. Even if you go down here, at the bottom of this toolbar on the left-hand side of the smart sheet window, there is a button here that looks like a chain link. You might think that that's for linking tasks together, but it's not. It's for linking cells, just like you might link cells in an Excel spreadsheet. So your option here is to end, go into the predecessors column and enter the task ID number of the predecessor that you might want to link it to. You can also right click or, or uh, I'm sorry, oh, close, close. It is it is actually really good at um, giving you uh, hints. So it, we just got, saw an example of that, of all the different kind of like pop-up hints or suggestions that, uh, that it offers us. If I uh, click on the little dropdown in this, in the second column over here on the left-hand side, there's a properties option in that dropdown. We don't have the option to do it here either. So, um, our, our options are somewhat limited in terms of linking tasks. Probably the easiest way to do it is just to go into the predecessors column and type in the, the ID number of the predecessor task in order to get that connection reestablished. And then if I want to assign a resource to this task, Smartsheet does not have the concept of a, um, of a, of a resource sheet like we have in Microsoft Project. In Microsoft Project here, if I go to the View tab and click Resource Sheet, here's a list of all the resources that I'm utilizing on my project to get stuff done. And if I want to add somebody to the project team, like um, Paul McCartney, I can just simply add his name to the, to the resource sheet and then go back to the Gantt chart and assign him to tasks in my project. We don't have that type of a construct over here in Smartsheet though. In Smartsheet, you either just type somebody's name into the assigned to column, or you can click into that column and there's a drop down. And if it's somebody that you've already utilized on your project and you've already typed their name in, then you can select their name from the drop down list. 
So there's an installation engineer to assign to that task. Here's another, um, what I would consider to be a, a, a shortfall in Smartsheet. In Microsoft Project, we have the ability not only to assign people to tasks, but we have the ability to assign them uh, part-time. And so in this case here, actually, let me, let me open up the, let me use this re assign resources dialog box here in Microsoft Project to demonstrate this. For this task here, purchase charging equipment hardware, I can see here that the project manager is assigned 50% or half time to that task. Over in Smartsheet, we're just simply selecting people's names to assign them to tasks. We don't have uh, an easy way to tell Smartsheet that we're assigning somebody part-time to a task. One caveat to that though, in Smartsheet, if you pay for an upgraded version of the software or of the service, it, they do add resource management uh, functionality that isn't available in the basic version like what I'm showing here. If I go here and click this project settings gear icon over here in the upper left hand corner of the, of the timeline in the Gantt chart, there it opens this project settings dialog box and I can go to this resource management page or, or tab and it tells me here that um, I need to upgrade my account and pay extra in order to get the ability to manage resources. And what comes along with that is the ability to assign people part-time to tasks in the project. And then it'll give you the ability to see, look at, look at um, views of who's assigned to what, on which projects, and how much. But you need to pay extra for that. So if you just have a, a basic, basic subscription to Smartsheet, you won't have that ability to, to do that. You can still enter people's names, either whether they're real people or whether they're just generic sounding roles like I'm using here. You can still assign, you can still put people's names on tasks, but you need that upgraded functionality in order to be able to do true resource management and workload tracking and so forth in, um, in Smartsheet. Another thing that you're missing in Smartsheet is the ability to work with um, work effort and costs. Over in Microsoft Project, when you assign somebody to a task, you have the ability to assign them with a certain number of hours of work effort. You can either assign them full-time or part-time and it'll calculate the work effort, or you can assign somebody to a task with a certain number of hours of work effort and it'll calculate the, the percentage allocation for you. And then to take that a step further, it, it's capable of calculating costs for you on each individual task throughout your project. So if you have resource hourly rates established, like I have here, $50 an hour, $60 an hour, $80 an hour, and so forth for the various people I'm utilizing in my project, it'll automatically, Microsoft Project, will automatically calculate the cost for you. It'll take uh, the, the number of hours of work assigned to a person, multiply it by their, by their hourly rate, and generate a cost automatically for you. Smartsheet, however, does not understand this notion of work hours on a task. You can create a work effort column, and you can, you can manually type uh, uh, numbers of work hours, 40 hours, 40 hours, 20 hours, and so forth. But it's not going to do that for you. You can also put in a cost column. So I'll insert another column here and I'll call this cost and click OK. And then you would have to, you'd have to build this field by creating the column and then going over here and formatting it in a currency format. And then you could either manually type in uh, 40 hours times $50 an hour. Let's say that that's um, $2,000. Or you could put a formula behind this field, very similar to what you can do in Excel, and it would calculate the cost for you. But you have to create these fields and you have to create the formula to calculate the cost, whereas Microsoft Project does that for you. So let me just delete the, the work column and the cost column. So although 
um, Smartsheet does have some fairly sophisticated features built in, and some people really like the fact that it is web-based versus being a program that you use on your desktop only, on, on Windows desktops, I might add. It does have some shortcomings in terms of some of the functionality that, that's built in or, or, or you know, lack thereof, I should say. So, um, one final thing that I'll point out here too is in terms of progress tracking, and then I'll and then I'll um, I'll wrap up here. In terms of progress tracking, Microsoft Project does have really great progress tracking features built in. We can insert a percent complete column, and you can simply type in a percentage there of completion. If a task is 50% complete, you can type in a 50 into that column, and it tracks that, and it rolls up to um, overall progress for the for the, its parent uh, summary row or phase, and it rolls it up even further to the overall project, as you can see here. You know, the, this task is 50% complete, and uh, if you take all the tasks under this equipment selection and purchase phase into consideration, uh, this entire phase is 17% complete, and then the overall project is 1% complete. And it shows you a visual indicator of a progress bar um, over here in the Gantt chart. Over here in Smartsheet, you would need to create a percent complete column, but you can certainly do that. It's, uh, it's easy enough to do. And then you can use that to track progress. When you, when you set up the settings for your project, you can, you can indicate that the percent complete, this is, this is to be used as a percent complete column that's gonna be used for tracking progress, and it knows what to do with that information. It rolls it up 17% for the, the entire phase, like, I, like, I, like we saw over in Microsoft Project, and we see the progress indicator over here in that, inside that bar in the Gantt chart on the right-hand side of the screen. However, that's not the entire picture when you're tracking progress in a project schedule. You should also be tracking, as a best practice, actual start and actual finish. Those fields are built in in Microsoft Project because people um, oftentimes do not start tasks when you originally planned. They don't often finish tasks when you originally planned. So the people that, that designed Microsoft Project, they, they accounted for that and um, they, that, that's built into the scheduling engine. In Smartsheet, there is no actual start or actual finish. You would need to create a column for each one of those if you want to um, track the actual start and actual finish uh, separately from the planned start and planned finish of your project. So how do you get Project or Smartsheet? Well, if you go to Microsoft's website and go to uh, their, their project page, you can type uh, microsoft.com slash project and that'll bring you directly to this page. You can click the See Products and Pricing button here, and it'll get, it'll show you the different options in terms of the uh, the cloud-based versions of Microsoft Project and the on-premises-based versions of Microsoft Project. I'm personally using the on-premises version of Project Professional, um, but you you also have the cloud-based versions that you can subscribe a monthly fee for. And uh, as I was mentioning earlier, if you get if you subscribe to Project Online Premium that comes with Microsoft Project Professional, um, the, the, the subscription version of Project Professional that comes with this package has these, uh, these card style views that allow you to do dragging and dropping and, and um, organizing your tasks in a more visual fashion. If you want to get Smartsheet and try it out, you can go to smartsheet.com and then they have different versions here that you can see if you click the pricing uh, menu at the very top of the screen here. Just for demonstration purposes, I have the individual version, but there's also team, business, and enterprise versions that you can subscribe to. These are all subscription plans. And if you have the individual plan, 
you can get uh, you can you can get you can pay for one license, but then that also allows you to share your information with uh, with other collaborators without needing to purchase additional licenses. If you have the team version, that's fifteen dollars a month, as you can see here, and you that's billed annually, and there's a minimum of three user licenses that you have to purchase. And that's the that's the case also with the business version. It's twenty five dollars a month, minimum purchase of three user licenses. And if you scroll down the page here, you can you can see under the under the plan features, the kinds of things that you get with each one of these versions. So a few things that I'm going to leave you with here today, a few takeaways. Number one, determine your scheduling needs before you start shopping for project scheduling tools. So even though Microsoft Project is, again, what I consider to be the, the gold standard in project scheduling tools, maybe you don't need all the functionality that comes built into Microsoft Project. If you're, if you're just starting out and uh, maybe you're a little intimidated by Microsoft Project or maybe you don't have the budget for it, you can certainly um, get, you know, maybe, maybe dabble in some of these other tools like Smartsheet or some of the other tools, project scheduling tools that are out there. But if you do need the ability to make uh, sophisticated resource assignments and track uh, work effort and, and personnel workloads over time and costs and generate some nice looking reports, then Microsoft Project is going to be one of the few options available out there that are going to give you all that functionality. But, you know, t think about what, what you really need out of a project scheduling tool in terms of uh, tracking timelines, assigning and managing resources, tracking costs, doing reporting, progress tracking, and so forth. Second thing that I'll, that I'll suggest here is determine what kinds of reports or outputs that you need out of your tool. I've yet to meet a project manager who, uh, has, who hasn't needed to create a report or two for, for their bosses or for their customers or for their team members. And so um, Microsoft Project does have some great reporting functionality built in. And even if the built-in reporting functionality doesn't work for you or doesn't, doesn't meet your needs, there's a lot of ways to extract easily the information out of the Microsoft Project Schedule and move it over into another tool that you can use for creating your reports. Smartsheet is a little more difficult um, to, to get your information out of to, to generate reports if you wanna use another tool. And then the, uh, the third thing that I'll leave you with here today is Take the time to learn how to do project scheduling properly. These are sophisticated tools and they, each one of these has a proper scheduling engine built in. And if you don't know what you're doing, if you're, if you're not following project scheduling best practices, you're going to end up with a mess on your hands that, that is not going to generate accurate forecasts for you, regardless of which tool you're using. So pick up a book, attend a training course, um, you know, learn how to do proper project scheduling regardless of the tool that you're using. So thanks for tuning in and spending this time with me here today. I hope that you found this information useful and worth your time. Before you go, let me just uh, give you one quick reminder. If you're not tuning in directly on my website, TonyZinc.com, then you can go there to find the video for this episode and others like it. You can see the links to go see where I hang out on social media, and then you can follow me if you'd like to get updates when I, when I post uh, new webinars or new training videos like this, and you can find other goodies on my website too. So until I see you next time, go back out there and keep building great things.